Welcome to Dr. Warwick's podcast channel. Warwick is a practicing cardiologist and author with a passion for improving care by helping patients understand their heart health through education. Warwick believes educated patients get the best health care. Discover and understand the latest approaches and technology in heart care and how this might apply to you or someone you love. Hi, my name is Dr. Warwick Bishop and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast station. Today I've got a consultation interview with one of my patients, Wayne, and his wife is in attendance. Her name is Maureen. Uh, They have both agreed and consented to me recording this consultation and I'm going to share it because Wayne's story is one that I think should be shared. Uh, I'll just confirm that you Wayne and Maureen are happy for me to record this. That's correct. Yep. Yes. All good. And I'd like to welcome you, Wayne and Maureen. Thanks for um, letting us record this and thanks for sharing your story. You're welcome. Cheers. Um, I'll start off with you, Wayne. It's probably been a few months that I've been caring for you. Um, if I recall, when I first caught up with you, you were by yourself. Uh, yes, I was. Yes. Can you just tell me how, how you came... Uh, what, what your story was and why you came to see me? Yeah. Um, I've always felt that I was a reasonably fit person. I've just turned 65. Um, when I turned 60, I mulled over it for about five years thinking that I, I really wanted to have a, a check, a proper heart check inside, rather than just the um, going to the GP and having um, a blood pressure taken. And, uh, yeah, so it took me five years, and uh, I think I discovered preventative um, heart care before you told me about it, because I, I walked up to you and said I'd like to be checked out, and I'm grateful that I did, because we found a problem. So, just in terms of your own journey, obviously at 60, you started to think about getting a proper heart check. You, you used the term proper heart check. What, what was your understanding, or had you come across any any information that made you realise there was something more out there? Um, Look, the short answer is no. It's just that I thought there has to be something out there. Surely, rather than just going to the GP, having um, a check-up, listen to your heart with a stethoscope, take your blood pressure, I could walk out the door and collapse because I know that's happened before. I know there are stories about that. So I I just knew that there was a way of... uh, People have had had angiograms and I thought well maybe I could do something like that have a proper heart check see what's going on inside sure Maureen did you have any experience in that space Um, either through friends or family or did you have any uh, knowledge in that space Mm, I didn't know that there was a preventative option Um, I think one thing I could add of perhaps value here is that uh, while Wayne was thinking about it for five years, uh, he didn't act on it till he had, in inverted commas, time. And I think we'd both think that it was worth, it would have been worth making time for earlier. Yeah, I think that's... Mm. Isn't that always the case? Mm, true. Mm. So, Wayne, when you, when you spoke with your GP, how was that conversation received by your GP? Um, well, it all started... I had some uh, cholesterol tests back in November... In 2017, it wasn't acted on, but the tests weren't great. And when I saw my GP about four months ago, five months ago, she she said, look, maybe um, it's time. I'd spoken to her about having a proper check, and she said, look, um, there is a test available. Uh, I'll refer you. Where do you want to go? And I said, look, um, Calvary's great. Um, she said, well, that's, uh, Warwick Bishop's good. She complimented you and the work that you're doing, and uh, so I made an appointment, and here I am. So you understand that one of the interesting things about that was that across this town, not all the cardiologists have an interest in preventative imaging. So um, to some degree, it is quite possible that you could have seen a colleague being given a treadmill test and reassured. Do you understand the difference in the outcome? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. I, I think for me, the, I'm not a doctor, but the only, the only real way of finding out what's going on is to have a proper look inside. You can do all the tests under the sun, but you can still walk out in the street and collapse. 
So, uh, um, and in fact, that's the story in the introduction to my book, which I'll give a quick plug to. I understand you both read my book and loved it. Yes. yes absolutely. <laughs> Can I just say that when I, when I came to the meeting, the first appointment with you, I sat down in the waiting room and picked up a magazine which had a, a picture of Peter Hudson, the footballer, on the cover. I thought, that'll be interesting. I picked that up, and underneath it was this book that said uh, preventative, you know, how to prevent a heart attack. And then I noticed the author... Hang on, that says Warwick Bishop. I'm just about to see a Warwick Bishop. So I put down the Peter Hudson article, picked up your book. I got two pages in, and uh, sadly you were on time and uh, came and got me. So, um, yeah. But you did encourage me to buy one. All right. So, um, so plug for the book over. Mm. But the important thing, I think, which is uh, hugely... Val- I mean, one is I'm really delighted you came to see me because there, there is a small chance that you may have ended up somewhere else and may have had a different... Um, management strategy because I've gone through with you the results of your CT scan can you explain what you understand and what I'm doing in that space for you Mm. well I didn't think there was anything wrong I expected to have the tests and be given a reasonably clean bill of health I've never had heart issues Um, it uh, I think we we had the uh, the second test which was the dye test and that um, determined that um, I had a plaque build-up in a main artery, which, uh, whilst it wasn't going to hurt me there and then, um, if I don't have any treatment, it's possible that something serious could happen uh, in the future. And um, uh, I'm now uh, being treated with uh, medication. Um, the, the future tells me that I'm going to have regular tests, uh, stress tests, and um, we're on top of it, and I feel confident that... Um, uh, when I do go, it won't be through a heart attack. So, that you said it's in an important artery. Do you actually know which artery is affected by your plaque? Um, the it's the, the the main one of the main arteries. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's the left yeah. main. Yeah. Left so main. your left main coronary mm. artery, distal part, has substantial plaque build up, and where we've got you on a a really quite an aggressive lipid lowering regime to try and. Uh, primarily stabilise that plaque mm. and as a secondary um, a secondary objective is try and have that plaque regress so we want it to get smaller over time if we can that would be fantastic so I've been driving your cholesterol levels down mm. um, there's often a lot of chatter on social media and there's uh, different papers released through the British Medical Journal who I think are just looking to be a bit controversial raising issues around whether stat- statins are good or bad and whether cholesterol's a problem or not and I think that conversation has become a bit confused and people um, are quite quite confused around the space and I think the way to try and understand it is that if there is something going on in your arteries as you have if there is a build-up of plaque in the arteries and that plaque is based on cholesterol, which we know, then lowering cholesterol levels by using medication can benefit your plaque burden. There's no question about that. But if we take someone who you measure their blood cholesterol and it's high, they have no plaque in their arteries, then of course there's absolutely no benefit giving them a statin. And this is what some of the papers are confusing. They're taking well people without plaque, without any problems, and saying, well, cholesterol levels don't seem to be causing heart attack. Well, I agree with that. What I, what I strongly advocate for is that if we find people are at high risk, lowering their cholesterol makes a real difference. Mm. Um, there's lots of people concerned about side effects with statins. And actually, earlier this week, I had a patient who's recently had stenting. And because of his own research through Google and YouTube and it could have been the local paper as well, has decided he did not want to take statins because of all the side effects. Can can you share with me the side effects you've noticed from taking these medications, Wayne? Um, I've had none. Uh, No, I've had none. I did have... um, Uh, Now, you... Is memory one of them? Because you may have forgotten some of yes. those side effects. No. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> memory, Actually, I'll ask a reliable source. <laughs> All right. Has, has, he got, has he had any side effects? I've noticed no difference. I don't think I even knew he was on statins till quite mm. recently. Mm. No, that's... Yeah, so, look, I think the answer is it's variable. Yeah. Um, 
you can't give some people peanut butter without them swelling up, so how could you possibly expect that some people won't have a, tr a trouble with an agent? But at the end of the day, what we need to do is match up the benefit you may get from a therapy versus the side effects you get or may get from a therapy and work to find a solution that's best for your situation. So thankfully, mm. I think we've got you on a great regime. We've got your LDL cholesterol down to 1.1 millimoles per litre, mm. starting at over 3 millimoles per litre. Yeah. This is a fantastic outcome. Yeah. That was a wonderful surprise to hear that yeah, this yeah. morning. So it's mm. great. And so we've, we've got your cholesterol levels down. We've got a plan for repeat stress testing. Mm. And in a couple of years, we'll look at repeat imaging to see what's going on with that plaque. We have removed a, an enormous amount of uncertainty around your cardiovascular health management. Mm. And because of the location of that plaque, if we were unaware, your first event would be your last. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's what I'm grateful for. I think um, uh, I'm glad I'm not going to be one of those people who gets hit with a, a real surprise. And so we've at least got the chance now to do something about yeah. it and stay on top of it. I would love to say that I can guarantee you won't have a heart attack. Of course, I can't do that. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not God. But what I can tell you is we've taken your risk from an unacceptably high level that you had no idea about, and we brought it down substantially, plus we've educated you, plus we've put you under surveillance. There's no question we've made you an, an amazing amount more safe and more likely to go without an event. And if you did have a problem, you know now immediately to present for assessment. So um, we've changed the whole outlook, I we think. We have, yeah, yeah. It, it feels like a different, the start of a new, a new life, honestly. It's quite yeah. exciting, isn't it? It is, yeah. Can I just throw in too, I think what's off-putting for a lot of people is that the tests that you had, the scans you had, aren't covered by any medical um, benefit scheme. So it's out of your own pocket. But I was just thinking now, it's so close to Christmas, would I prefer something wrapped up all pretty and nice or to know that Wayne's health <coughs> has substantially improved? It's the latter. Um, and if families could look at it that way as an investment uh, and a gift, it could be uh, a plus. Yeah, so maybe... Um what are they? Yeah, it's a good... Th that's true, actually. And um, maybe Dr Bishop give vouchers. Is that what we're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. We can start <laughs> <something>. <laughs> I'm only joking. But, Maureen, the, the time and time again I speak with people about the cost of the test and I try and put it into context of value of the test. Yes. And that's what you're talking about. Mm. We, mm. You know, some families will spend 100 bucks taking the kids to the movies. Yes. A hundred bucks taking the kids to the movies. Wayne spent six or seven hundred bucks to get clarity for the next two decades of his life so he doesn't drop dead. What's it worth? Mm. Yeah. 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 You can't Absolutely. put a monetary value on it's it. It's a no-brainer. No. No. People no. will spend 600, 700 no. bucks or a thousand bucks on a new set of tyres. Mm -hmm. More mm -hmm. than that on a new set of brakes. Mm -hmm. Just to travel safely through life. Well, yeah. what's the mm -hmm. most important vehicle you've got? Yeah. And what's the engine in that vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> it's your heart. Yeah, yeah. And, and all, the, um, Warren, all the people I know who have had heart problems um, had them because they didn't have any preventative checks. And I bet they wish they could take it back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, best thing I ever did. Look, I might wrap up there. I think Maureen's getting all teary and so am I. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Relief tears. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, we're, do you have anything else you'd like to say, Wayne? Uh, no, just um, to use the uh, catchphrase of a well-known brand, just do it. Yeah. You know, um, honestly, it's... Um, uh, I'd rather live to be uh, 85 than 65 because if I hadn't come to see you, it seems like uh, the, the issue that we discovered was going to be really serious. And so I'm grateful that um, you know, $600 so far and counting, but what the heck, yeah, you know, it's absolutely. really important. Mm. Maureen, is there something last, um, last comment you'd like to throw in? Yes, um, I, I'd, like, I'd like there to be a more definitive, I guess it's individual, but a, a definitive dietary plan. There's so many dietary um, changes when when you um, when you learn a bit more, but there's conflicting information out there. So it's hard to get that right. 
I think we're going to have to take that one on notice. Mm -hmm. um, our, <laughs> our consultation today Please. doesn't have time to cover that. I mm. do put a bit of stuff on the website. Um, cool. And I agree with you. Uh, some dietary stuff is complicated. Mm. Um, but that's, uh, that's a topic for another time. Um, just to confirm you guys are happy that we've recorded this, Maureen and yeah, White. absolutely. All good. Um, then I'd like to wrap up. I'd like to thank you both very much for that for letting me record this and for sharing it and to those listening thank you so much for joining my podcast and till next time i wish you the very best goodbye you have been listening to another podcast from dr warwick visit his website at drwarwickbishop.com for the latest news on heart disease if you love this podcast feel free to leave us a review